tonight. It was you. It was you. Nobody but you. Tribulation, Jesus. Welcome to the virtual Wednesday edition of Getting the Word Out from the Bethel Baptist Church of Pasadena, California, where John T. McCall is our senior pastor. We pray that our Bible study ministry blesses you greatly. Meanwhile, if you'd like to be a blessing to the Bethel Baptist Church ministry financially, you can do it at BethelPasadena.org. Just click on the Giving tab and follow the instructions. Your support of this ministry is greatly appreciated. Our pastor is coming with an anointed word. Again, thanks for joining us here at Bethel Baptist Church of Pasadena. Uh, welcome in Bethel and all of our special guests uh, to our virtual Wednesday Bible study. Man, that song is true. Uh, it's God who's been pulling us through. Uh, whatever you've been through in your life, it was God who pulled you through. And whatever you're going through right now or will go through in the future, it will be God who pulls us through. Give God a hand to praise today if he's ever pulled you through anything. Uh, when I go see uh, the doctor or when you go see your doctor, and after you've described your symptoms uh, to him or her, uh, the doctor then completes a medical evaluation. Uh, and once that medical evaluation is done, the doctor then uh, gives you his or her diagnosis. Uh, and you really can never treat a problem unless you first diagnose the problem. Let me say it again. In order to treat a problem, you have to first diagnose the problem. Uh, and once you diagnose the problem, uh, the doctor then sets out a medical plan or a medical treatment plan uh, to address uh, your diagnosis. And if the plan involves medication, then the doctor makes a referral um, to the pharmacist um, who then uh, gives you their prescription. Uh, the doctor gives the pharmacist uh, the medication uh, that he's prescribing to treat your condition, but it's the pharmacist who fulfills uh, that prescription and gives you the medication. But in all of that process, at the end of the day, it's still up to you if you decide to follow what the doctor has ordered. Uh, yes, the doctor can make the diagnosis, um, give you a prescription for your ailment, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to take the prescribed medication. And right now, um, in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis and civil unrest and the pain and the protest, the police brutality and racism, uh, people hospitalized and families uh, who suffered the loss of a loved one. Uh, we need a prescription uh, for the troubles presented by this particular pandemic. Uh, and, and there has to be a clear diagnosis of the problem in order for a prescription to be written. Uh, and I believe that as believers, uh, if we expect um, to have a better world to live in, a better tomorrow for our children, for our grandchildren, uh, then that process needs to begin today. Uh, we need to make a clear and concise diagnosis of what the problem is and then develop a treatment plan for that problem. You know, there's so much uh, division um, and, and I'm not sure if we were ever in agreement anyway, but, but it just seems so obvious now uh, that there's so much tension uh, and agreement, disagreement in uh, America, you know, and some friends of mine have called it uh, in these not yet United States of America. 
Uh, but it seems, it seems to me, uh, that all restraint has been removed from society uh, and uh, people are feeling some kind of way and they're not afraid to express uh, how they feel. Um, and even though it may not be validated, it may not even be real, uh, but whatever they are sensing, uh, they're feeling free uh, to express it, to say, uh, as the old folk would say, whatever comes up, comes out. Uh, and, and I believe, I believe that's cause for concern right now when any society uh, has restraint removed from the people or when the people feel like that there are no restraints. Um, and yet, when we look in this society, we have so much in common. Um, but it seems like the vision uh, is the order of the day. And individuality uh, versus community and the common good is now the new standard. Uh, and many people, many people seem on edge. Uh, gun stores, um, uh, the sales of guns are off the chart. Uh, uh, many gun stores reporting having uh, not enough weapons to even sell because people are just buying them so quick. Uh, and, and it's just amazing to me um, how there seems to be a lack of just social decency uh, and respect for each other, uh, being cordial, um, and, and seeing the potential in uh, each other. And God forbid, uh, don't ask anybody where, where is that mask. Uh, why aren't you wearing a mask? Uh, uh, that question may be met with all kinds of verbal and even physical assault and even the loss of your life. Um, you know, people are so offended today uh, by any little thing, any little thing, and when they feel that their opinion uh, doesn't matter. Uh, and the Bible teaches us that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Uh, well, uh, what's the diagnosis? Uh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, if you are watching today, um, uh, I believe, I believe that uh, too many of us in America have allowed our will, our will, our desire uh, to override God's word. Uh, I believe um, that we've allowed our will to override what the God, what Word of God has to say about living. Um, and, and we've entered this period of rebellion, um, and you see it in so many aspects of our society today. Uh, it's just, every time we turn around, uh, uh, it seems like the forces of rebellion are simply raising their ugly head. And I believe it's simply because uh, we've allowed our will to override God's Word. Uh, in other words, that we believe and think we're in charge. Uh, we believe and think this is our world, uh, that we have the final say about it, uh, that we're in charge, um, and there's no longer a need to consult God for what he has to say about anything. Uh, uh, and so today, today, today in our text, I, I'm going to look at uh, a familiar passage. I preached on it here recently and taught on it, uh, but I think it's, it's getting lost uh, in all of what's happening. I think uh, as we've shifted our focus to the president, uh, to uh, politicians, uh, to all of the turmoil and what's happening, and I think we've shifted our eyes off of the problem solver onto those problems, uh, that we are so focused and so laser focused in on what the president says, uh, what the governor is saying, what the mayor is saying, that we really haven't asked the question, what is God saying? Um, you know, and when any society, when any country, when any group of people uh, refuse to obey the word of God, uh, we forfeit his love and the promises that he's given to us. And yes, I know uh, God is long suffering, um, that he would, that none should perish, uh, but the history records uh, when any people, any society, any nation uh, turns its back on God, um, they're headed for a disastrous downfall. Um, and I wonder right now in America, how far uh, have we gotten to the edge? Uh, how close are we to the, uh, the place of no return? Uh, you know, 
Um, God has promised this for us that are time tested and true. Uh, and he said before one jot or tilde of his word shall fail, uh, that heaven and earth will, will, will pass away. Um, and, and I believe that, that this is a time uh, where if anybody, especially the people of God, uh, that we cannot allow our will to circumvent what God is saying in this season. When you look around um, and uh, this, uh, this COVID-19 virus, how it keeps mutating and changing and um, uh, has hospitals overloaded and medical professional people overworked, uh, and many of them are now contracting uh, this virus. Uh, I really believe it's time for the people of God uh, to awake out of our sleep, uh, out of our casualness, um, and begin to do what this time-ordered uh, word of God today has to say. Uh, uh, God provided his people a long time ago uh, with, a, with the prescription that was needed uh, to guide them out of their sinful ways. Whenever, uh, whenever the people of God resorted to their will uh, and not his will, um, uh, God gave them a word that would allow them to be forgiven and restored. Uh, and what he said to them back then, I believe he's still saying to us today. Uh, look with me in 2 Chronicles um, chapter 7, uh, verses 13, 14, and 15. 2 Chronicles, and you already know it by heart. Uh, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 13, 14, and 15. Look what he says in 13. When I shut up the heaven so there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people. Look at verse 17. Verse 13 says, when I shut it up, when I shut up the heavens so, so there is no rain. Um, um, uh, command the locusts to devour the lamb or send uh, a plague among my people. He says in verse 14, if my people who are called by my name, you know it, say it, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Look at this text. If, if the if, if my people, if my people will do this, then I will do that. Uh, if, if, if you humble yourself and follow my instructions, then I'm going to respond. And I'm not going to respond until the if is followed. So if you want the den to happen in your life, then you got to follow what the if says. Um, and, and then he says in 15 that, that now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Uh, today, just for a few, a few moments, I want to talk about their prescription for healing. Their prescription for healing is right here in his word. Um, in our text today, we see the glory of God uh, falling uh, in the place of worship among the people of God. Uh, Solomon and um, um, God's people experienced the glory of the Lord right in their midst. Uh, and I believe right now, right now, um, um, uh, where, uh, in, in your city, in your state, across the nation, uh, we need to experience the glory of the Lord. We need God to show up and show out in a mighty way. Um, and I got some calls this past week, and, and yes, I know, you know, uh, individual uh, churches and believers um, um, that they are praying, um, um, that, that they are fasting, uh, they are in tune to God. Uh, but, but, but I want to just talk about today uh, the people, Solomon, the national leader, the king, uh, um, uh, the head um, um, of the people, the king, King Solomon, um, uh, was engaged actively in this worship experience, the leader among the people in worship. 
And I wonder, I wonder, what would happen in America if we had national leaders uh, who would engage in the worship of God? Uh, and yes, I understand politics and, and engaging in politics, but I'm talking about uh, above politics. Uh, worshipers of God, uh, uh, worshiping God, in tune to what God is saying, and uh, uh, seeking His face and following His advice. A, a real worshiper. I, I don't mean just a Sunday churchgoer, uh, someone who casually reads their Bible, then, and, and uh, on, on, on certain occasions will show up in the church. But I'm talking about national leaders who set the tone, uh, who set the pace for the rest of the country, uh, who don't mind. Uh, being singled out, you know, um, um, you know, you have uh, behind the scenes, you know, the um, uh, evangelicals who who are in love with this president and and support everything he does and and won't even give a critical critique even now, um, uh, in the midst of life being lost, in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, but I thought and believe that that we're we're called to speak truth to power. Uh, to stand up for righteousness anywhere, uh, to declare what the Word of God has to say. So let me move, let me move on. Move on to my text today. Uh, uh, Solomon uh, and the people experienced the glory of God. Uh, God's glory rained down on them. Uh, and when you read the chapter, um, uh, chapter seven, one of the first thing I noticed uh, in, the, in 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 the chapter. Um, um, that 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 the people of God got right. Um, uh, um, they, they they put themselves in right position and humbled themselves before God. And, and if we expect the world to get right, uh, then it starts with believers. Uh, believers have to first get right themselves. Um, and, and and the world will never be right uh, if believers are not right. Uh, and so one of our responsibilities. As our light shines before men and they see our good works, or as we glorify uh, our God, uh, then the world needs to see it. Uh, we're not hidden Christians. Uh, we don't hide behind in the shadows of walls. Uh, uh, that, that, that the world needs to see that God is real, uh, His Word is real, uh, and, and, and that we should be followers of Him and never to doubt, uh, even under pressure, uh, to stand and declare that what God's word said is truth. And we're the church, uh, the church that sits on the hill and, and its light shines brightly that all those who in darkness may see. Uh, and Jesus says that, that I'm leaving, I'm no longer in the world, that, that you're in the world and that you are the light of the world. You are now the salt of the earth, that, that you are now the individuals responsible uh, for ensuring that others uh, grasp my word. Yes, I'm going to do my job. I've got all power. Uh, and I'm going to rain down my glory. But you have a personal responsibility uh, to live a life of righteousness and holiness. Uh, your life exemplifies Christ and the power of Christ in your life where others will see it and will run into it. You know, as believers, we model for the world this unseen spiritual power, uh, uh, this treasure uh, that God has placed inside these earthen vessels. Um, and, and, and it is the spiritual um, that, that powers and controls the physical. And I believe right now in America, uh, uh, the physical, uh, or our will, is more dominant uh, than the spiritual. Uh, but for the believer, we understand that if success is to take place, if God's glory is to fall, uh, then it is the spiritual, the unseen spiritual force uh, that has to be present and that takes over the physical, uh, takes over how we think, how we feel, how we behave. Uh, it has to absorb our life. And, 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 you, and the spiritual man that's connected to God uh, has to be in control. Uh, and we understand uh, that when we are connected with God uh, uh, spiritually, that, that, that now it is the spirit that now feeds our soul. And then our soul is what controls our body. But many of us are operating just the opposite, uh, that our will is out of control, our will is dominant, and our will is not being controlled 
uh, by the spiritual. Uh, uh, and, and once we become saved and come into the knowledge of Christ uh, and who he is, uh, that we humble ourselves before him. Well, we humble ourselves because we didn't realize our source doesn't come from ourselves. Uh, it doesn't come from our intellect. It doesn't come from our possessions or our ability or who we know. And, 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 and you may be blessed with all of that, but you didn't get it because of that. Uh, it, it came from the Lord. And so we humble ourselves and realize that all I uh, ever am and ever hope to be has to be done through him, that he is the source of my power. He is the source of my being. And so I humble myself um, before him, prostrate fall before him, and, and recognize and realize and admit uh, who God is in my life. Uh, the people, the people humbled themselves. Um, uh, they brought their sacrifices and laid them before the altar. Uh, and, and, and they worshiped and praised God. The king, the king, uh, national leadership, the priest, uh, the workers of the temple, um, and they sacrificed and, and, and they worshiped the Lord. Now anybody can claim to be a worshiper, but are you a true worshiper? Are you really a worshiper of God? Or are, are you just going through the casual motions um, of worship? Uh, go in the same and come out the same? Uh, something about when you humble yourself before God and you surrender yourself to Him, uh, that things begin to change. Uh, and even if your circumstances don't change, uh, something about you begin to change of how you see your circumstances in light of you. Um, and, 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 and so they worship. Um, um, uh, the glory of the Lord fell in their place. Um, and um, um, God, God comes to Solomon uh, at night. Solomon has accomplished the work in the temple and uh, serving God. Uh, and, 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 and the Lord comes to him at night uh, and says to him, uh, um, um, he says, Solomon, you know, when the people sin, uh, when the people disobey me, um, uh, and I shut up heaven, uh, so, so, so there is no rain or command locusts to devour the lamb or send a plague among my people. He says, if the people who identify with me, uh, the people who are called by my name, the Christians, the believers, the followers, the saints, uh, the born again, uh, would simply humble themselves. He said, uh, if you won't hear them, he said, it begins with us. If you want forgiveness, it begins with us. It begins with the believer uh, taking responsibility to follow this prescription. Uh, and I know right now, I know right now in America, um, um, uh, it seems difficult. Uh, the pressures are mounting and, and what we're looking at uh, can sometimes feel overwhelming. Uh, but our God is a giant slayer. Uh, he can slay any giant. Uh, that, that comes to oppress and impose uh, itself on his people. Uh, and so we shouldn't be fearful. We shouldn't be wearied. Uh, we just need to humble ourselves, uh, take personal responsibility, and, 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 and follow their prescription. Uh, pursue God. Have a right relationship uh, with him, which results in living a righteous life. Um, and, and not give God what we think he wants, but what he requires. Uh, and he requires our whole heart. Uh, he requires our obedience. Uh, you know, and, and, I, and, and I just think uh, in this season, uh, it's just time out for uh, playing church or acting like the church and going through the formal motions uh, 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 of church. Uh, but for believers uh, to really sit down and humble yourselves and admit, man, I'm not in charge. I thought I was. Uh, I thought I had control uh, over my situation, but I'm, I'm seeing that I don't. Uh, you know, uh, as Southern California uh, is preparing for a possible second shutdown um, uh, in the midst of this virus, uh, hospitalization uh, rates are, are up, uh, infection rates are up, uh, people in the ICU wards are up, uh, the death rates are climbing. Um, 
and 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 and, and this is a season for us to take it serious and admit uh, that God, we're helpless without you. Uh, we have no might uh, uh, to fight this giant of a virus. Uh, that you have got to come through. Now we have responsibility uh, uh, in the matter. Uh, it's not. It's not always. Not all on God, and and and, and what He requires us to do. Um, uh, uh, that was an if in this thing. Uh, you know that if my people do this, well today, what are some of the ifs we need to do? Well, if my people will wear a face mask. <laughs> I I mean. Um, the simplicity uh, of, of, of just wearing something um, uh, to cover uh, the droplets um, 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 that, that, that may come out of uh, your person um, to prevent it from infecting somebody else or even yet somebody else infecting you. How simple that remains. Uh, but for a believer, when you humble yourself before God, you move away from first and second, third, fourth amendment rights uh, to what does God say? Yes, man says you have the right, uh, but if you humble yourself before God and seek his face and you love me and love is the order of the day, then you don't want to see me infected. If love is what's in your heart, you don't want to see any harm or danger come to me. Um, uh, if you humble yourself before God, uh, and love people, then you, you don't want to see the medical staff uh, stretched as thin as they are, uh, concerned and worried about their own health. Uh, that, that, that you'd be concerned about the medical staff going home and infecting their family. Uh, you know, right now, right now, um, uh, just imagine uh, if you came home at night and you had to sleep in a separate bedroom from your children or from your spouse or decided not to even go in the house and you sleep in the garage or sleep in the car, sleep in the trailer. Uh, there are many medical personnel who are so concerned about infecting their family um, uh, that they've been separated from their wives and children because they're scared, they're nervous, they're afraid that they may bring the virus home. And yet there are people going around saying, I have a right not to wear a mask. We're infringing upon my amendment rights. Uh, is it about right or is it about your love for God and for the people of God? Um, see, that's when you're going through the motions. Uh, 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 that you're saying you love God, but you're really re relying on what the amendment says. God's word is above any amendment. Uh, God's word is above any constitutional right. Because you know as believers, the Bible says sometimes you have to give up the right <laughs> for the wrong. You got to turn the other cheek. You got to go the extra mile. Um, but when society becomes so individualistically dominated that it's my individual rights, it's what I want, uh, then you're saying it's my will. It's my will that needs to be satisfied. It's how I see it. It's how I think about it. And the heck with anybody else. When you humble yourself, it'll cause you to see the truth of God's word. It'll cause you to understand um, um, that, that, that this is bigger than any one person. And with any society, uh, whether it's through business uh, decisions or economic decisions, governmental decisions, um, or even in worship, when, when, when we reject God, uh, that's not the sign of humbling yourself and prostrate, falling before Him and yielding yourself to him you know and, and and maybe and maybe maybe some of you haven't thought about it uh, but you do know uh, when hospitals get pushed and they become overstretched uh, that 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 now in the hands of medical personnel is life and death uh, that they now have to make decisions uh, that so-and-so is of an age that so-and-so has these many ailments uh, and we only have this many or this amount of supplies or, or ventilators, that, that who's the best one uh, to give this to? Who lives and who dies? Those decisions. Um, and I don't believe we have to be in that predicament right now uh, uh, for other people making those decisions in our lives, that, 
that if America, if Southern California, uh, uh, if the people uh, would just tune in and follow the prescription, I believe the course of this virus can be changed. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, true believers live to please God, not ourselves. Uh, and, and sometimes as Christians, it's uncomfortable uh, when you got to get on your knees and go beyond and when you're being stretched. That's what it means to be a believer. That's what it means to submit to the authority of God uh, in our lives. Um, uh, and, and we're called to minister to others, to the hurting, to the disenfranchised, to those who don't look like us, uh, uh, to those who don't live where we live. We're called to minister uh, to those people. Uh, and how are we treating other people today? How are we treating them? Uh, if there's no love and concern shown and that we're fighting and resisting spreading a virus that we know uh, has deadly consequences. Uh, we've been in charge to comfort others uh, with the comfort by which we're being comforted. Uh, uh, um, uh, biblical charity begins at home. Um, you know, and, and serving the needs of others without expecting uh, anything back in return. Uh, uh, that's what happens when, when, when a believer humbles themselves, that they understand uh, their real role uh, as believers. Uh, and that it's not constitutional, it's biblical. Um, and the way to receive is by giving. All of those things that we already know, uh, that we have to begin to practice uh, and to show in how we live. Uh, uh, what are you saying in this message? Humble is the way. Uh, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and do what? And pray. Pray. Prayer, prayer, prayer is the reliance on God and not upon ourselves. Uh, uh, I said it before that, that, that prayer is like the space shuttle. It takes our request uh, to God. Um, and um, 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 God, uh, God is a prayer answering God. Uh, he just didn't put this here. Uh, he wants us talking to him. Talking to him implies a relationship with him. Uh, uh, giving our cares to him and realizing that he's the one who will hear and he'll answer and he'll deliver, he'll show up, he'll come through, uh, he'll bless your life. Um, and, and, and right now, as others' lives are being put on the line uh, for our lives, um, uh, then we ought to pray uh, and, and, and seek his face. Uh, and I believe that our God uh, is a God of order. And he's not a God of chaos nor of division. And anytime there is chaos and there is division, uh, there is a devil somewhere in the midst. Um, and, and, and when we've been told uh, that this journey we're on, that this fight we're engaged in, uh, that it is not a fight, not a physical fight with flesh and blood and, and all of that, but it is a spiritual battle. And, and we have to war in the spirit if we're going to win this battle. This battle is going to be fought in prayer uh, and seeking the face of the Lord uh, and doing what he says to do. Um, and whenever you humble yourself, you have to take an assessment of you, but where you're at. Uh, uh, are, are you really being obedient to his word? Uh, uh, where are you at? I mean, uh, when you humble yourself, you're willing uh, to let the light shine in on you uh, and whatever is exposed, uh, that you're willing to work on it and to change it uh, and to give it over to God uh, and then come out walking and living a righteous life. Um, uh, and, 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 and many times that requires internal determination and fortitude uh, because change is never easy. Uh, a, a change is hard, uh, you know, and, and, and even now, um, uh, the struggles we're in, you know, the resist, to resist moving on what you think, how you feel, 
to, what, to what's God saying in this moment? What does his word say about this situation before I respond, before I react, before I give a reply? Uh, 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 what is the biblical response that's needed uh, in this? Uh, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? You know, um, 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 every day, senators, uh, when, when they meet um, um, in D.C., uh, they have a chapel and they begin with prayer. Wouldn't it be nice um, <laughs> at any of our political um, events, and then e even today, uh, uh, as I watch this um, um, uh, COVID-19 update, wouldn't it have been nice today if the president had just said, even if he didn't pray, he said, before I begin with that talking, I want the nation to pause for a minute of prayer. Man. After getting over my shock, I, I, I would have prayed then, but I'd have been like, man, he did. He went there. Uh, uh, in, in, in this season, um, could it be uh, that God is driving us to our knees? Um, uh, that he's taken away all of the things that we relied on and, and are used to coming to our rescue? Um, uh, could it be now um, uh, that it's by no accident, uh, you know, that unemployment rate is up? Uh, that it's by no accident um, um, that uh, Congress gave more money for unemployment and now they're looking to take it away. Uh, uh, is all of this, could it be that God is simply driving us to our knees to pray? Uh, as the old folks say, before the axe falls, uh, 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 to humble ourselves, to pray, uh, and to seek his face now. Um, and, and cause us to turn uh, from our sin. You know, um, even as believers, uh, you know, even as believers, you know, uh, when you humble yourself, you'll see yourself. You know, um, um, uh, there have been some things I've said about this president uh, that, I, 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 that I've been reminded uh, my job is to pray uh, for those who have the authority over us. Uh, and, and sometimes we spend too much time talking about stuff as opposed to talking to the one who can solve the stuff uh, uh, and, and giving that to God uh, and to lift up the leader and, and, and put him in God's hand uh, 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 because I don't have the ability nor the power to change them, but God does. Uh, and he can move uh, and somebody said when he shows up, uh, he knows how to show out. Uh, that he's able to change hearts. Uh, he's able to adjust and change conditions. Uh, we just have to believe it and stay faithful to the prescription. Hey, you know how it is. Uh, when you go see a doctor and the doctor gives you a prescription, um, uh, and sometimes that's not the right medicine, uh, uh, well, you don't say the heck with the doctor, well, you keep going back and getting the prescription change. Uh, and you keep trusting that the doctor's gonna find the right medicine and you're gonna keep taking it until the healing comes about in your body. Well, it's the same way in this text today. We have to continue to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face. It's not a one-time event or one hour event. It's an ongoing event of seeking the face of God uh, for him to move in this situation. Okay? Uh, when, when, when we pray, God, God answers. He comes through. Uh, and, and, and the solution doesn't start with the White House. It starts with Christians. It starts with us. Uh, uh, that, that we are the answer uh, uh, to the problem. Uh, if my people <laughs> uh, who are called by my name. That's us. Um, and, and, and until we um, 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 uh, take off all of our our own self-sufficiencies or get stripped of them, our, our, our independence, uh, our, our, our reliance upon self and follow this prescription in Second Chronicles, um, uh, then there is no answer because God shows up when? when? When the if is answered, then he'll hear from heaven. If we want him to hear um, and to answer uh, and to forgive us of our sins and to heal this land, then we got to respond to the if. Um, are you responding to it today? 
and, and, and hopefully this day will be a change day to get you to see it from, from, from another uh, uh, perspective. Uh, what the world needs now is us um, uh, to engage in, uh, in prayer and seeking the face of God uh, and meeting the requirements he laid out uh, in this passage. Uh, and then if we turn to then, um, and if you want him to answer, you want him to move, if you want um, him to hear from heaven uh, and forgive our sins, and, and sin is singular uh, in this passage. It's not an S behind the, the sin. It's not sins. It's sin. Uh, and, and, and the sin that we fall into uh, is not trusting God. Uh, it's to think that we're in charge. That we're in control. We make decisions. I don't need him. I don't rely. No. Uh, that's the sin. And when any people make that sin uh, to not trust in God, uh, uh, then they're headed uh, for a disastrous end. Uh, and he says that, that, that he'll then hear from heaven, forgive that sin, and will heal their land. Uh, our land needs healing today. So much healing is needed. Uh, not just the COVID-19 pandemic, but the racist hearts needs to, uh, to be healed. Uh, unforgiving hearts needs to be healed. Carrying grudge hearts. Uh, just angry, mean, and mad, and hostile, and unloving, untrustworthy, conniving. I mean, all, we need healing in the land today. Uh, our, our land needs a healing. Uh, and, and, and the healing is available. And, and this passage closes out with, and now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Which says to me, uh, when we humble ourselves and, and get in the right uh, attitude, right perspective, and um, and look at ourselves and, and confess those sins in our lives um, and, and live righteous lives. Um, uh, pray to God, you know, because it's hard to call his name and seek his face uh, when you're not in tune and, and, and you're engaged in sin. Uh, it's impossible uh, that when you're seeking his face, you're telling him who you are, who he is. I'm in need of you. Uh, I have troubles, I have problems, and I need you. I can't solve them, I can't fix it, I don't have the answer, I don't know what direction to take. Uh, and if you don't guide, if you don't lead, if you don't show up, if you don't do this, uh, then there is no help for us. I pray. I pray you've been blessed today uh, on this virtual Wednesday uh, Bible study. Uh, I pray you, you tune in to the Sunday uh, broadcast. Um, uh, after we uh, complete part two of help is available. Uh, help is available. Uh, and, I, and I hope on next week, uh, on our next virtual Wednesday broadcast, um, that we'll continue our critical conversations uh, and talking with healthcare providers uh, about the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, but until then, um, uh, you stay in the blessed place. And I want to close with prayer today. Uh, God, how we bless you. How we thank you. Uh, we bless your name and uh, forgive us of our sins as we humble ourselves before you and seek your face. Um, we ask you today to look on uh, medical staff, hospital staff across the nation uh, who are placing their lives on the line to, uh, to heal others. Uh, we pray for their decision making, God. We, we pray by your spirit, by your power. Uh, that you are the healer. You are the God that healeth us. Uh, we, we lift up those families who are in bereavement right now uh, for loss of loved ones. Uh, uh, we pray, God, because you promised to be the God of our comfort. Now, comfort hearts today. Uh, and, and God, as we apply your word to our heart, uh, cause us to seek your face uh, and to turn from anything that prevents you from working and hearing our prayers. We thank you for this day. Thank you for the awesome privilege of prayer, and we bless your name. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen. Thanks for joining our Wednesday night virtual service here at Bethel Baptist Church of Pasadena, California. 
Again, visit our website for giving information and more. It's BethelPasadena.org. On behalf of Pastor John T. McCall, thanks for watching. If you're ever in the Pasadena San Gabriel Valley area, we invite you to come in and visit with us at 1972 North Fair Oaks, Pasadena, California. To order a copy of today's message or for more information, log on to BethelPasadena.org or call the church office at 626-794-3136.